Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Ann Ridden and this is Dave Ridden. And welcome to another episode of Clever, Clever or, or Never. Never, where we test different gadgets to find out if they work or not, so you don't have to buy them if they don't. This first gadget says it is a mini garlic crush. You can to the difference with the commodity and works of arts. It's like one of those uh, motorcycles out of Tron. You know that? <laughs> So I thought what we would do in typical Clever or Never style is do a competition between traditional just chopping and the gadget. So do you want the gadget or the chopping? Ah, gadget. Gadget, gadget for you. Ready, steady, go. No, I'm not particularly fast at chopping garlic, but we'll see which one's better. So I chuck one in. <laughs> That's it, gadget going. This is, this is useless as... <laughs> Surely it has knives in it. This is as useless as a fat in a thunderstorm. <laughs> Where is that saying? <laughs> oh, it's alright. Is it chopping? Yeah, but it's the fun of it as well. It's not just the practicality. This is actually like so much fun. <laughs> Maybe I'm supposed to empty it, but I'm just jamming it in there. Alright, so tip yours out and we'll do a comparison. What do you think? The knife or the Tron garlic cutter? Tron. Knife. Look, you've got big chunks. Very That's the way Tron likes it. <laughs> right. I feel like the knife does a much more even job. Super clever. Vote for me. <laughs> Put your thumbs up or thumbs down in the comments. This gadget is Worker Ant Party Picks. You can see that we have here a big fat and it's not a spider? A, it's a little bit terrifying like a spider, like an Australian black widow. But it has a big spike on top and then you put your party goodies on top like, like, like this. so. Let's give it a go. Hello, Cheers. Lad. You eat it off the pick like yes. this. If you were having a kid's bug themed party oh, yeah. like with bugs and spiders yeah. and stuff, perfect for theming that. They, they do work. There's not a lot in a packet though. Only 12. Just give them a little wash. Are you concerned about people chewing them, like kids putting them in their mouth? Possibly, possibly, or just eating the whole thing, <laughs> thinking that it's all part of the goodness. Maybe not for a kid's bug party then. No, but they are, I like them. They're cute uh, and uh, they work. They do, they work. So clever or never, I'm giving it a... This next gadget is supposed to make a spiral garnish out of different vegetables and fruits. And let's twist. Something's happening. Something's happening, I can hear it slurping away. And it's coming out the other end. Now you're supposed to take that bit off. Okay. And pull it through, open it up. Ah, oh, look at that. And look, a springy cucumber. Come on, that's awesome. So that's pretty impressive, I reckon. I don't think you can do that without this gadget. Yes. How far can we push it? Do you think it'll work in a banana? Uh, or is but, that too well, soft? Well, it might be a bit soft, but we can always give it a go. You want to try it? Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? Look. Oh, did it work? Did it work? Can you get the rest of the banana off? Well, I think I can. Look at that. <laughs> that is pretty. I have never seen a banana that shape before. That is. Oh, imagine that on a Pretty sandwich. amazing, actually. I think that's pretty impressive. That's that's getting a clever for me. Definitely. Yeah. I like it too. Bang. So for the next gadget, Dave, you asked me to make you an unbaked apple pie. Mm. I know apple pie is your favourite. Is your gadget the oven? Yes. Thank you, Anne. You've done very well. <laughs> Thumbs up for Anne. Really? No, I happen to have a gadget. Ooh. Look at that. Now this is a pie crust fabricator. <laughs> Fabricator? A what? Deep, deep flux capacitor. It's a pie flux capacitor. An edger. An edger. Oh. Otherwise known as an edger. That's its sort of non-technical name. It looks like it's an edger. Look at that. It works. Not bad. Here we go. It's the prettiest pie. Very nice. I think that all that's left to do is give that a clever or never. What do you think? It's simple, but it's clever. A it lot works. like me. <laughs> You're not simple at all. No, and not clever at all. But very clever because you asked for apple pie. So sure. These are cookie cutters and fondant cutters that are mm. spring-loaded. 
When you're doing the cookie bit of it, you just want to get the cut shape. Okay. So yep. you just push down, pull up. You can push it down to get it out if you want, but we're not wanting the pattern on there. So oh, so we don't, we don't want the words. The words is just for the fondant. Because if you try and do the words in this, it's just going to bake out and it's going to get stuck on it and All everything. Right. So, just, so star first? Yeah, just cut me some stars and cut some, some diamonds. Stars, Okay, so once they're baked and you've let them cool, this is where this really starts to come into its own. I'm gonna go with the star first. And if I cut, just like you did with the cookie, but then push down because oh, yeah. you wanna indent that best wishes pattern. I've got best wishes, what I've have you got? I've got love. Oh, you've got love. Lots of love. Then put a little bit of water on the back. And put it on your cookie. Look at that. You have this best wishes cookie. And if you're thinking, but fondant tastes awful. Fondant just tastes sweet. So if you mix into the fondant, just like this is white fondant that's been colored with green food coloring, also add a flavor. So for the green, you could add some mint. For the red, I've add, added some raspberry flavoring. So it tastes more like a lolly. This reminds me of when we were in that long lockdown last year, you made cookies, so biscuits for everyone on the street. I did. That was fun, actually. If you're in lockdown right now, I did cookies like this, put them in a bag, but with a note that said, meet your street. And we had a Zoom meeting with a, a code for the Zoom meeting and a time so that we could talk to everyone on our street, get to know if there are other little kids in the street. You know what else you did in lockdown? What? You wrote an amazing cookbook. <laughs> Congratulations, Anne. <laughs> I did write a cookbook. So if you haven't already get it, Go get it. <laughs> Available now worldwide. Crazy Sweet Creations by Anne Reardon. So for the next gadget, you asked me to get you the ingredients for damper, which yeah. I know the Australians watching know what that is, but I'm not sure if everyone else will, so you might need to explain. Well, every Australian kid, uh, we learn how to make damper generally once in our life, and it's kind of like um, campfire bread. Uh, it's not very uh, hard, um, but you just cook it on an open fire and it's pretty delicious and it's very memorable as a kid. That's right. And it's got no yeast, it's just baking powder, so it's super easy. But what's your gadget with damper? Oh, so uh, what if you happen to find yourself in the Australian bush mm -hmm. and you don't have any surface or any, uh, any implements to knead the dough? So you don't have a bowl to mix it all together? Nothing. And because you, you just crashed your, your truck and you just find yourself out amongst the kangaroos and you're thinking to yourself, I could go a bit of damper right now. And you happen to have the ingredients and a gadget. All, it's very convenient. And you happen to have this gadget, a tremendous gadget. A swimming cap. <laughs> it's a swimming cap, yes. Straight from the uh, Aussies' finest hour in the Olympics. Uh, and this is something that you could do. It could replace a bowl. You don't need a bowl. You just pour in your really? ingredients. Let's go. Give it a go. That's milk. Yep. If you want to make damper, I'll put these quantities on my website for you. Mm. That's flour with a bit of baking powder and a little bit of salt. And this is just melted butter. Fabulous. Butter. As we right. say in Australia, butter. So normally you would stir that up together in a bowl and then once it's coming together, you would get your hands in and knead it all together until you get a nice dough. Mm. So I'm assuming you're gonna do all that. Oh, I'm gonna give this a go. Give it a crack. I'm, I'm, oh, wow. It's coming out the top. No. Oh. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll hold it upright while yes. you try and knead it. All right. There we go. You knead it like with your knuckles, right? Yes, just until you've got it all mixed into a nice dough. Look at that. Damper on the way. Yeah, beauty. Coming together. While you're kneading the damper, uh, let's take this moment, giving us a good Aussie little meal. Uh, why don't we teach the viewers, the fine viewers here, a little bit of an Australian vernacular, Aussie vernacular, some slang words, some sayings, flat out like a lizard drinking, uh, flashes a rat with a gold tooth, figures a banker's wallet. I've never heard Australians say these Australian sayings. There are lots of words say we say them. a lot though, like, let's go to Macca's, you wanna come over for a cuppa and a barbie. And if you don't know what these things mean, Let's, how about you put them in the subtitles? You might not okay. know that, but Dave does all the subtitles for my videos for people who can't hear or people who need to watch it with no sound. So if you're just reading the subtitles, this isn't gonna make sense. But read the subtitles so you know what the, it means. What else is there? You could chuck a snagger on the Barbie, this Arvo, before you watch the footy. You wanna come over for that, mate? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I reckon this is done. So given this is silicon, what are we doing now? We're putting it in the foil to cook it? That you also happen to have in the back of your car when you broke down? Of course, well it's very convenient. I was on my, on my way to a damper convention <laughs> when when my truck broke down. And you didn't have a bowl, but you had this. This actually worked really well, well for needing it. I had a silicon that. bag, so I didn't yeah. need a bowl. <laughs> it worked actually very well. Yeah. Um, can we cook it in that? Well, we could cook it in that. In fact, how interesting would it be? Like the, the, the uh, temperature, like silicon's good in ovens and stuff, right? Yeah, you can bake stuff, but I think an open flame might be hotter than an oven. So say my truck did break down in the yeah. Aussie bush, and I happen to just have this silicon bag and a lump of damper, but I also managed to get myself a kangaroo steak. Oh. Could I use this? To cook your damper. To cook the damper. And what will we do with the kangaroo steak? Cook it over the barbie. With my silicon? No. <laughs> I'm not putting it in. You have that bit of damper dough. You cook that in that. I'm taking okay. the other half. And I'm going to wrap it in foil like we normally do. Double wrap. And we're going to cook them both and see what happens. Sweet. Put the damper down the bottom near those hot coals and chuck the silicon bag with the damper on the other side. Oops, that kind of unfolded as I put it on. Let me straighten that up. Hmm, it appears to have a bit of a hole already down the bottom corner. Oh, oh, look, it's on fire. Obviously flames are too hot for silicon. You can put it in the oven, but you can't put it on an open flame. Let me just put a kangaroo steak on so that we can have that with the damper. Cheeky bird. <laughs> now we can't have that. And the silicon damper, obviously we can't eat that one because the silicon, it hasn't melted, it's just kind of turned straight into ash and there was no smell off it, it just has gone into this white ash. The damper in the foil is looking good though, ready to eat. It's a bit like a bread, but it's not as airy as a bread, it's just good filling campfire food. You can almost taste Australia. Good. Let us know which ones in the comments you thought were clever or never. And thank you to everyone who entered the competition. There were some great entries. It was really hard to choose. Yes, but if this was you, we can't get in touch with you. There's a business email in the description below this video. Get in touch with us because you're one of our winners. Thank you so much to all my patrons for your ongoing support. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, make sure you let the algorithm know by liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching more of my videos. Maybe just a sec. And don't forget to buy the book. <laughs> I just have a copy hanging around. Make it a great week, and I'll see you on Friday.